Today, I'm hosting Champions League Imperialism, where every team competing in the Champions League goes to war with each other to crown a winner. We will spin the wheel of teams and the arrow to decide who plays. The games will be simulated in FC24, and whoever wins moves on. For example, if Dortmund beat Bayern, Bayern will lose their land and their best player joins the winning team. Now let's get started. First is Manchester United. They head north to play against City. Yes, that's right. Our first match of the series is a Manchester derby. United would lose the ball in a crucial spot, and City would capitalize via Grealish. The game was level until the final seconds where this happened. The refereeing here needs to be investigated because Man United's goal was not allowed since the time ran out. I guess it pays off being an oil club. Jokes aside, City were able to add Bruno to their squad. And Manchester is now blue. Our second team is Celtic from Scotland who head north to Newcastle. Newcastle has a chance to take a lead early with Anderson, and they do. Newcastle could seal the game with this counter-attack. And what is he doing? Celtic have one last opportunity to score in the last seconds of the game, and this happens. They really celebrating like they've won the World Cup. Now in extra time, Celtic have an opportunity for a winner, and they score. This would lead to the end of the game for our first upset of the tournament, and Isak is so mad that he joins the team that beat him. Why are you bullying me? Celtic take control of Newcastle's land. Also, I've just realized that I put Celtic in Ireland, not Scotland, but we'll move on. Next is Sociedad, who head northeast to play PSG. This game remains level, so we're off to pens. Mbappe steps up and slots it for the first pen. Next is Sociedad, who miss. Nope. The next few pens were all scored, but now it's up to Donnarumma to give the win to PSG. Nope. And he does. PSG move on, and they take northern Spain. They add Mikel Marino to their midfield. Next is Lazio, who face East to play Red Star Belgrade, but sadly they're not in the game. Our next spin lands on Feyenoord, who face Southwest to Arsenal. The game starts off with a great finish from Odegaard. Feyenoord couldn't find the equalizer, so Arsenal move on. Arsenal will also steal 81 rated center back Hanko for more depth in the back line. Next is Sevilla, who will go north to play Madrid. A mistake from the Sevilla defender gives Vinny a chance to score. And he gets it. Later in the game, N. Nasiri gets a through for a chance to equalize, and he scores. The game would stay even all the way to pens where it's sudden death. Chouameni steps up, nope. and he misses. Now it's Sevilla's turn, and he wins it. Sevilla upset Madrid. They also get to steal Jude Bellingham, potentially making them a dark horse contender. Now we have Porto going south to play Benfica. Porto would strike first with this nice goal by Pepe. Then Benfica would get their chance, and this happens. Di Maria steps up, nope. and it's saved by Costa. Unfortunately, that would be the end for Benfica, as Porto have defeated them 1-0. And Di Maria now joins their squad. Our next matchup will have Dortmund heading west to face PSV. The only goal of the match would come from Luke de Jong with this nice volley eliminating Dortmund. PSV would add a good choice at keeper with Kobel, and they would gain a large chunk of land. Union Berlin now heads south to play RB Leipzig. This game would be wrapped up quickly with a hat trick from Benjamin Szeszko, eliminating Union Berlin. This win would give Leipzig an addition of left-back Gosens. Next is Milan, who will be playing rivals Inter for best team in Italy. Inter would score the only goal of the match, thanks to Lautaro Martinez, which means that Rafa Leon will join them. Next is Celtic, with newly acquired Isak, who will head southeast to barely hit PSV's land. The match started off with a goal from Celtic, but De Jong would equalize shortly after. Then Veerman scored this nice goal to put PSV ahead, but then in the last seconds of the game, Koble did this. Do you ever look at someone and wonder, what is going on inside their head? There's one last play in extra time, and this happens. Isak has proved to be a quality addition as he saves Celtic. They will also add the man of the match for Celtic, Kobel, and they will own German land. Next is Sevilla, with newly acquired Bellingham, who will go northwest to face Porto. Acuna plays a ball into the box, and Ennisiri smacks it in for a goal. That was actually the only goal, so Sevilla win.
and they steal Di Maria as well as taking their land. Next is Braga and Sevilla will play once more. This Sevilla side is looking nice, so I don't see Braga winning. And I would be correct as Sevilla score four against them and Bellingham even scored. This win would add Horta to their midfield and it would give them the rest of Portugal. Our next match will see Bayern face up against RB Leipzig. The match would start off with a goal from Leroy Sané, then from Musiala and Kane would finish it off. Making it very easy for Bayern as they steal Openda. Our next game will have Barca head south to play Atletico. The game started off with this beautiful goal by Rafinha, and then Gundogan would play a nice ball for Joao Felix, making it easy for Barca and Griezmann will return to his former club. Now Arsenal get to play, and they are faced up against who I think is the best team so far, Celtic. And my opinion would be correct as Maeda scores this goal to give Celtic another upset victory. They add Martin Odegaard to their already nice squad. And they own a nice chunk of land. Next is RC Lenz and Celtic get to play once more, but this one would be Odegaard's debut. Isak starts off by scoring this nice outside-the-box goal, and I think he's the player of the tournament so far. That goal gives Celtic a 2-0 victory. And centre-back Danso joins Celtic in a much-needed position. And they now own half of France. Now Lazio actually play, and it will be against Shakhtar. Just one goal would be enough for Lazio to win, take over Ukraine, and add Stepanenko to their squad. Next is Celtic again this time versus Man City. This has potential to be one of the best games so far. Bruno has it. He plays it to Holland. Bro's controller disconnected. Now Celtic has control. Isak gets it. He shoots. What a goal to give Celtic the lead. Celtic's lead would last the entire game, meaning Celtic have defeated Manchester City. Now they can add Holland to their insane team. Now PSG is up. And they play who else but Celtic. If Celtic win, we could see Mbappe team up with Holland. PSG have a chance to score, and newly acquired nope. center back Danso proves to be a good signing. Holland now has an opportunity, and he scores. PSG now can equalize with Mbappe, and he slots it in. Mbappe kicks it past the defense and is using his pace. And PSG take the lead. Celtic can equalize with Holland. He shoots, nope. and it's blocked by Donnarumma. Sadly, this is where it ends for Celtic after an amazing performance. Now PSG's attack is deadly with Holland and Mbappe. I can imagine that defenders will sh themselves before facing this front three, and PSG have taken a big portion of Europe. Next is Copenhagen playing against Bayern. I won't waste time here, but Bayern absolutely dominated this one, and for obvious reasons, Bayern will steal no one. Next is Inter, and they will play Lazio. Inter should win with how good their team is, but surprisingly, no one scored and we're off to pens. It's 4-4 and Lazio need to score this. He goes for a Panenka nope. and he misses. Now Fratesi can win it and he scores. Inter get a big land boost and they get to add Luis Alberto to their midfield. We're down to our top 10 teams at last. Our first top 10 game will have Barca face Sevilla in a great match. These two teams are pretty good, so it should be a good game. Jules Koundé has it out wide. He plays it in. Griezmann leaves it to Pedri, who scores. Sevilla have a corner. It's played to Ennisiri, and he levels it. Rafinha plays it to Griezmann. He turns around and scores a beautiful goal. And he's showing his inner Brazilian. Ennisiri has a chance to level the game, and... Nope. This would give Barca the victory. And also, don't look Madrid fans, Jude Bellingham. That's right. He fits in the team perfectly. Finally, the wheel lands on Antwerp, and they play PSG. If I was on that team, I would just give up. But give up they didn't, as Vincent Janssen somehow takes the lead versus the mighty PSG. Then Holland did this again. In the last moments of the game, Asensio has to put PSG on his back as he does this. Bro single-handedly brought PSG out the mud. But then, my goat Vincent Janssen does this. Just give my guy the Ballon d'Or already. And with that, PSG have fallen to Royal Antwerp. I bet none of you imagined this happening. They control half of Europe now. Royal Antwerp get to play, but this time versus Barcelona. Will Antwerp have the same luck? I guess not, as Griezmann does this. A corner is played to Mbappe, and he just barely misses. Nope. Antwerp are dominating, yet they're still losing. Some nice tiki-taka from Barcelona leads to this goal by Belling.
and Jude does his already iconic celebration. Pedri gives it to Lewandowski, who makes it three. Antwerp's one-game luck ends here as Barca thrash them. Mbappe joins another team once again. But this is very unrealistic because Barca are broke. Now, Barca are the ones that control Europe. Barca get to play again, but now versus Bayern Munich. If history repeats itself, this is not good for Barcelona. But the two lineups are very even. The Barca curse versus Bayern would stay true after this Kingsley Coman goal. Sané is taking it on his own. He shoots and scores. With five minutes remaining, Griezmann plays it to Bellingham, who scores. Will we see a comeback? Maybe the Mbappe curse is real, so Barca lose and Bayern take Mbappe. Now, this team is scary. Plus, Bayern get most of Europe. Bayern play again, but this time versus young boys. I'm not expecting much from the Swiss side here. Goretzka plays it to Musiala. He lifts it into the box for Sané, who scores. Then Mbappe gets a goal with a nice finish. Again, no disrespect, but no one from the young boys squad is good enough for Bayern. For our final five, we get RB Salzburg for the first time who play Bayern. Bayern should easily win this one. Surprisingly, we're tied at the half. But Bayern would bounce back with a volley from Kane and another Mbappe goal. Further increasing Bayern's land. Again, no one's good enough. We are now in the top four, and two teams have snuck their way in here without playing. Coincidentally, we get Galatasaray who play Napoli. I expect Napoli to win, but don't be shocked if Galatasaray pull it off. Galatasaray are playing well and they have a chance early. Nope. Some nice Napoli play leads to this goal by Cavaradona. Now Galatasaray have it, and this is the best football I've seen today. Napoli are on the counter. The ball lands in front of Osiman. He shoots, and it goes in. That is the weirdest winner I've ever seen. Napoli advance. Now it's the final three, and I've changed Bayern's color. For a trip to the finals, we have Bayern who have to play Inter. Napoli really got a free trip. I'm excited for this game. These two teams are both stacked. Bayern or Inter, who y'all think is making it. Martinez plays it through to Leao. He has it down the line, and he shoots it near post for a goal. I say right foot creep, ooh. Mbappe has it. He plays it through to Kane, who scores. Dumfries plays a lovely ball to Martinez. He doesn't miss those. Leao plays it from the corner. The ball lands in front of Thuram. He scores. Surely this sends Inter to the final. And Inter have done it. They will steal Harry Kane, so he has a chance at his first trophy. And because Mbappe has some sort of curse, our final is set. Inter versus Napoli. Does this mean Serie A is the best league? This spin will determine who is the local team. It's Napoli. The teams are ready. Will Napoli win their first Champions League, or will Kane get his first trophy? Inter start off hot with Kane, but it's a good save. Then Napoli has an opportunity, but Summer saves it. Luis Alberto thinks this is the WWE as he takes a man out. He plays it in. And Leao scores. He's really celebrating like this for his rival team. Osaman has it inside the box. He plays it to Zielinski. He shoots. Nope. And what a save. Dumfries has it on the wing, and what is he doing? This is time-wasting at its finest. Liao plays it to Kane, and he scores, but he's offsides. Osimhen is through, but that's great defending from Pavard. Added time is running out, and that's it. Inter are your Champions League imperialism champions. Harry Kane has done it. He won the Champions League. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. This took forever, so it would mean a lot.